What are you laughing at? <laughs> Look at that. That is not good. Your ears are a bit droopy today, I think. Not from there. <laughs> yeah. Those are really good. Wow. Not that bad. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Did not stay six feet apart. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. I'm going to Home Depot this morning. We need some J trim for where I need those actuators moved with the new curtains. It says online they have it, but we don't know if they have it in this color. And I'm pretty sure beggars won't be choosers right now in the state of the world when it comes to any sort of resource. <laughs> what are you laughing at? So, I'm not wrong. It's all the nicest stuff together. Yeah, it's just like bended. There we go. I'm picking up Linda and she's coming to Home Depot with us. And we're also going to our favorite store, Princess Auto, which is actually just tools and stuff that we need all over the farm that we don't have. Zip ties, drop, drop pins. Bolts. Is it drop pins or drop bolts? I always call it bolts, but I guess it is pins. I don't really know. Oh. Anyway, all the things that walk off, we are going to go get. And it's like, she doesn't get out at all. We don't get out at all. So this is her big outing. <laughs> this is like, this can be strenuous for her. <laughs> what do you want to tell the people? There's something. What did you do? <laughs> did not stay six feet apart. <laughs> Uh, my wallet's in the barn, you know, as okay. you do. Okay, well, go get it. Right hey, can I use your bathroom? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Watch out for the puppy, it's a vicious one. Okay. Well, I guess the cat's out of the bag, so yes, Belinda is having a baby. I don't think I've been happier uh, for someone for a very long time. She's had quite a go the last few years, and uh, I haven't, a baby is something she has dreamed about. She is due in October. I'm just over the moon, excited for her. Anyway, thought I would share that with you guys since Belinda has been a big part of this and, and my journey. And uh, I've known for a very long time. Uh, so yeah, it was quite a process. And uh, I'm just, Mark and I and the kids are just so happy for her. Uh, I don't know what she's thinking. She's lambing in September, calving in December. So anyway, that's our little Belinda. She can seem to power through anything. I think for the rest of the day, uh, Chris and I are going to set up this handling system again, and we are going to hoof trim yet another group. So I'm loving my trimmers, and I use them any chance I can. Oh, your shoes. <laughs> all right, we are all uh, set up here as normal. I'll run a few through and then I'll explain what I do. Just as a reminder, these are the uh, Infaco um, battery powered hook trimmers. So they're a lot nicer than just the manual ones, but they're pretty expensive. So they're an investment. But man, I've used them a lot since I've had them and it's completely changed this whole job for the better. For anybody that's new, this is a Vino squeeze hoof trimming shoe. We're going to squeeze her as tight as we can just so she doesn't move. A little bit off the tip. And then we try to get the sides trimmed back.
you guys remember when I did a U evaluation and I checked udders? Well, I missed one apparently. Uh, Look at that. Uh, that is not good. Hard. The teeth uh, is still pretty engorged. And this is uh, uh, So, she's been bred. So let's hope you didn't, you didn't get bred. The problem with uh, the way I was hoof trimming before is I wasn't hoof tr trimming them before they got scanned. So she missed her last scan, meaning she wasn't pregnant. So when those ewes miss that, then they go too long between hoof trimming. So that's why I'm not waiting for them to get scanned. I'm doing it as soon as I pull out the rams. I want to get these hooves done their first time. Um, and then at least they will be trimmed. A, if they have to get shipped, then they're nice and trimmed for, for the sales barn. Um, and B, they don't miss, if they do have to get bred another time, they're not going that extra six weeks before, before they get trimmed again. So she's the perfect example of why. Number one, she is huge, so she's gonna be hard to get in. And number two, her, her nails, she's probably got the worst hooves in the barn. She's the worst one to miss to get off schedule. Get up. We just finished cleaning up, Chris had just left for the day, and uh, my vet called that uh, was doing the blood work on goat. We have our last test that just came in, and that was on CL, so caseus, lympha, blah, blah, blah. Never get that word right. Hi, sweetie. We do a stretch, we usually do a poop. We're gonna poop. So I have CL in the barn, so I knew for sure she probably at least has antibodies to it. So I think this test, test uh, focuses on the levels of antibodies. Hi honey, your ears are a bit droopy today, I think. They're always maybe a little droopy. Oh, there she's pooping. When they do this test, I guess it comes back in three categories. Um, so she's come back with category two, which, which doesn't really tell us a lot. Um, so the vet said CL in the past has definitely surprised her before and sometimes you don't know it until until you do a postmortem. and she said one of the ones uh, was very similar to goat got really really skinny but a real bright animal um, and when it finally did die they did a postmortem, and, and she was full of CL so little tumors all inside her so I'm hoping I'm hoping that's not her have you been eating still? I told the doctor you were. Just likes being scratched. Black 
in communication. Happy Friday, everybody. We are cleaning up our old dryer. Mark finally put it on Kijiji to hopefully sell it, and we've got a guy coming to look at it today. So he's just doing some last minute, making sure everything is in working order. What are you doing, little doggy? Yeah, this is the beast. So I think Jess was working on cleaning it, and they're just working on the blower pipe, or the blower unit that was at the back. He's just looking at it at the shop. Is this what was underneath? Yeah. It's like brownie batter. I wouldn't try and taste it. It's not the wrong size. There are some joiners. I don't know if it's in this unit. And some are different than others. I do remember that. I never really showed you guys the um, Mount Everpoo is gone. It was huge. And they spread that in about three hours, I would say. Did you do an IT specialist? I'm um, trying to figure out how to um, tie this into the PLC so we can start it remotely. Uh, right. Auto start? Yeah, but it's a different controller, so... Good girl. Yep. Good girl. Yep. Bring them up. That's it. Good girl, Kinsey. Okay, we are hoof trimming again today. So a lot of the same of yesterday. Remember Horny? That's her. No horn at all. Alright. Horny Toad, show the people your horn. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Okay. So that's it right there. Nothing there. Yeah. She likes you. <laughs> Look at that tail. Sorry, goat. 
All right, we are half done hoof trimming, which is amazing. Uh, we've got one more pen left, but we had uh, 88 between those two pens today and yesterday. So it goes so much better when I have Carissa. Uh, but while I had her, she said my corn auger was smoking this morning. So I just want to make sure the belt's okay. Hmm. I don't know. Check it out. So I'm not sure how much my uh, my equipment guys love me this week. Um, Monday and Tuesday were kind of, they were stifling hot when they came to put this curtain in, this replacement curtain. And they had put this actuator down here and I was a bit concerned on snow load because that was why I had to replace this in the first place. So yesterday and today they came and changed it and I'm sure they hated me, but anyway. I think this will work a little bit better. If it does snow, I'm hoping that uh, we're not digging this out. Um, you've seen you've seen us dig this barn out every winter, and it can get deep on this outside. So I'm hoping this will uh, help. He said these these shafts are really quite strong. It says he said it was one of their best unit that they actually have. So um, I'm thinking that will work. They're telling me it will work. So uh, my electrician came today. He wired this up. Hi Lucy. He, wi he wired this up um, in my old controller for now. And then when the guys come with the fans and the lift, then my electrician can put up the uh, weather station, which has to be put up at the peak. And then uh, we will hook up onto the whole new panel and go from there. So it's exciting. At least step one of of the project is done, but uh, yeah, now it looks like I got a bunch of cleanup to do. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday. Mark has just left for the field. He is in the beginning stages of incorporating that manure into the ground. It rained right after we got most of it spread. So he's gonna just kind of tickle that into the soil. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we're gonna start planting some cover crops. So I'll kind of go into detail a little more on that, uh, maybe a little later today, and just how all that works. It's a pretty cool system, what we do here. I know we don't have our animals out on pasture, but uh, I'll just show you kind of our way of how everything uh, completes a life cycle on our farm. We just do stuff a little bit different. Uh, but right now I am going to our abattoir where I, where I got my lambs processed this week and I'm really excited to try that lamb sausage. I never do this stuff, I never experiment or anything, but uh, I'm pretty excited. All right, you guys, this is the meat. This one's all full. And that is all my sausage. Beauty. I'm actually going to pull one of these out and test it. All right, we are home. I don't do kitchen stuff usually on this channel at all, but because it's lamb and because I have a bit of a hack for you guys, I wanted to show you what I do here. So our barbecue is done. It's been done for like a year and a half. We haven't replaced it. I don't feel like getting the smoker going. So about a year ago, well, during COVID, we bought, an, we bought a, uh, an Instapot, and this Instapot has the air fryer on it. Recommend. Um, so our little hack for hot dogs and for sausages, if we don't want to wait on the smoker, is to use the air fryer. So like 10 minutes. I'm going to throw these on because I'm dying to tell you guys how these taste. This is the spices I picked up last, uh, this week actually, in my last video. And uh, it's like a curry. So I'm gonna throw these in the Instant Pot, like so. So just in there, in the little basket. Oh my God, it smells so good. All right, now we're gonna put the little thing on. And then we do air fry. 
I'm gonna do 10 minutes. And that's oodles, probably only need about eight. And then I'm gonna start it. And we're gonna test these. Those. Whoop! Steamy. Sausages. Oh, goodness gracious. Alright. Oh wow. Look at it. Alright. Let's see what this tastes like. Oh wow. That is so good. Got a kick? Those are really good. Wow. Well. Was it as good as you remember? Not that bad. Whoa! <laughs> there it is! <laughs> it's got a bit of a kick. It's really good. Isn't it good? It's spicy. It is spicy. That's really good. It's so good. Alright, so I told the people that we'd talk about how we go from basically the sheep barn, from the feet, through the sheep, into the poop, and then after that, it's all you. So, the poop gets spread. On the field, <laughs> right? But Which... then we, because uh, we have Nutrient Management Act in Ontario. Technically, if you spread manure in a non, on a field with non-living crops, you have to work it in. So right now we're working the manure into the top, maybe two inches of the soil profile, and then uh, once it kind of dries a little bit, because we've had some rain, uh, we'll come in probably tomorrow and plant cover crops. What the cover crops do is really just kind of soak up the nutrients that the manure uh, makes available. And then kind of it gets stored up in the plant residue as it dies over winter. And we spray it off in the fall. And then as those uh, plant residues break down next year, it becomes more available for the crop the following year. So it's like a way to put fertilizer on your soil and kind of retain it and keep it, especially the nitrogen component because it tends to leach away and make it available for crops next year. So uh, we'll get a crop of crop planted and then we'll strip, strip till it and this fall uh, for the corn, actually it's gonna be soybeans in this field, but for Most corn uh, to kind of get planted in that narrow strip and take advantage of uh, all the good stuff that we're doing. Manure is a really nice thing to have right now because fertilizer uh, prices yeah. are insane, ridiculous. So kind of as people experience the rise in commodity prices as farmers we're getting more for our crops right now with the markets the way they are we're getting uh, charged more <laughs> inputs have gone up accordingly yep. as well so yeah things are just a little bit more expensive so we're trying to do uh, a little bit better job on our fertilizer efficiency side of things right. all right we're gonna turn around